Hey, it's Buck from Bacon Trees. Thanks for stopping by. Quick video on uh, equalizers for live sound systems, specifically 31 band EQs. I had a comment today from Nirmal Sen from India asking the question, does any 31 band graphic equalizer work like this? In response to my video from 2011, how to equalize, EQ a live sound system, how to ring out speakers for feedback. The answer is almost if you stick close to the zero line. What I've noticed some people do in the past was I've worked at lots of venues and I, I've uh, been to some venues where there were like multiple sound people, maybe six or seven different sound people over a given month. And sometimes I used to see like all the sliders below zero, um, even on decent EQs like Ashley's, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking if you go too far away from the zero line, you're going to get uh, more ripple response depending on the, the EQ, right? So let's go through the EQs. There's uh, what's a popular one right now, and Ashley has uh, this in some of their units, if not all their units, I can't be sure, but constant Q. Basically, with this constant Q design, Ashley EQs has implemented in their design. I can't speak for every single equalizer that they make, but um, I read specs on equalizers and they have constant Q equal and saying basically that there's a low ripple on the output. Well, when you take one slider and you turn it up and you take another slider and you turn it up, you're going to get some interaction between them where there's a bit of a ripple because of the way their combined responses on the output. So the Ashleys are uh, one of the sales points of their EQs is low ripple on the output. Some EQs are cheaper and maybe they have more ripple on the output. For the most part, I don't worry about the ripple because I use any EQ that's in front of me because I don't own a 31 band EQ. I decided against that, I was going to, and I thought I'm just gonna use any EQ in front of me and when I have a, a gig, I'm going to rent an EQ. So I usually just rent equalizers. Last show, I rented a uh, um, ART EQ. Unfortunately, it was noisy on the output for some reason with the AC in the venue and I couldn't use it. So I used a 10 band Yamaha EQ, which was clean, but it was only 10 bands. And I got pretty close to the same response as I would have got with my 31 band EQ because I don't go nuts with the EQ. Okay, constant Q with um, some sort of ripple response on the output. Um, if let's let's talk about ripple for a sec. If you took every single slider of an EQ and turned it up 6 dB, there's going to be some amount of ripple by the way they're combining on the output. So, with the uh, Rains interpolating EQ, interpolating, interpolating, however you want to pronounce that, there's little to no ripple on the output. Okay, and then there's the perfect Q system. Right, so you don't know all the time what's in front of you unless you study equalizers and uh, like study EQs and go right into the specs and stuff like that every time you use one but sometimes you just can't go to the specs and you go just give me a 31 band EQ please you can make it work here's the trick don't cut below minus six and don't boost above plus three stay around the zero line the zero line is safe you get a more natural response you maintain amplitude at the same time because you're not cutting the more you cut on your EQ the more you have to do gain makeup with a really decent sound system and common sense, it's very unlikely that you have to cut too many feedback frequencies. Some sound systems I've worked on actually have no feedback, uh, but they do need some tone control, which is why I take out the lower mids to clean up the sound. And I put a high pass filter, about a second order filter, starting at around maybe 50 hertz. Now, some people might say, wait, what are you doing? You're cutting the bass. I'm not. It's a second order filter. I'm rolling off the bass. If a bass drum or bass guitar or keyboard needs more bass, I'm using their channel for that, but I don't need it on the front of house. So I'm going to put all these graphs up here from the Rain uh, webpage. Thank you, Rain.com. You, you make an excellent webpage for getting people to understand what EQs actually do. That's my spiel on EQs. I hope there's something that can be gained from this. Stick to the zero line as much as possible and do modest modest boosts and somewhat modest cuts. No more than 3 dB boost. In fact, in a live sound system, I never boost on the 31 band. I always high pass filter and cuts for feedback and cuts for bad tones I don't like. I do subtractive EQ. You go subtractive EQ and don't go too far with it, you're gonna get a nice clean natural sound out of your front of house. 
so don't go nuts with the EQ. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe. And I am working hard to make more videos in the new year. I think I may actually be less busy so I can actually make more videos. And cheers. I really like doing this. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Make a tree.